Y'all are awesome. We appreciate your patience and we appreciate you being here. This is security through transparency, SIG security update in the maintainer track. If you are here for another talk, you're probably in the wrong room and that's okay. We can all hang out anyway. Um, my name is Ian Coldwater and I am the co-chair of Kubernetes SIG security. And this is... I'm Savita. I uh, lead the SIG security documentation subproject. And this is... Yeah, hi, my name is Ray Lahano. I am a field engineer with SUSE uh, by Way Ranch Labs. I'm the subproject owner for the third party security audits. I'm also the 1.23 release lead coming out in December. Hi, I'm Pushkar Zogekar. I am the lead for SIG security project tooling and I work at VMware. So, what is SIG security? SIG security is a relatively new um, SIG in Kubernetes, not to be confused with tag security out of the CNCF. Um, and what we do is we are responsible for um, creating space for people who are interested in contributing to the security of the Kubernetes project to come and um, hmm. discuss security topics with each other, work on deciding the um, direction of security within the project, what our Kubernetes enhancement proposals will look like, what features go into alpha and beyond. And also, we, are, uh, we help SIGs work together to, um, because we are all actually responsible for Kubernetes security. <laughs> and we help, um, we help internal cross-project communication and we help um, external communication between the project and the larger community of either engineers, developers, the open source world, whatever. And um, so a lot of SIG security's work is done by our sub-projects and our sub-project leads are going to tell you about it. And I just gotta say, they are amazing. They are doing amazing work and I'm so excited to be on the stage with them and for y'all to hear from them. So, yeah. Thank you, thank you for that, Ian. I am so, so happy to share the stage with my uh, Hello, friend. I'm gonna call them friends because we have grown together. And uh, I wanna start with uh, SIG security documentation to project. Um, so um, before I dive deep into what the project is, I wanna take this opportunity to uh, clear something. Like everyone has some kind of question, like there is already a SIG for documentation. Why do we have another? project for like security documentation. Well, the SIG documentation um, does a whole lot of uh, things like they host the website, they take care of multiple Kubernetes version related documentation, they update the overall content, and they also uh, kind of like take care of the localization and they also do a little bit of security work. Whereas the security documentation subproject has only, only one and only focus, which is like improving the security content of the Kubernetes website. The goal of the project is to make security, the uh, Kubernetes website a one-stop shop for all information related to Kubernetes security. Right now, it's not the way that you have to look um, outside of the Kubernetes website to get many articles. I have stumbled upon a whole bunch of articles. Some of them are outdated, some of them are not related to the uh, current up-to-date release information. So that is the goal. Now that we are clear about that, I want to move a little into like uh, what it all we do in this project. Say for an example, um, if uh, uh, it's very, very simple and easy to misconfigure uh, configuration and that could lead to like a lot of catastrophes and also several sleepless nights for the service provider because of a zero day attack or some kind of vulnerability and so many things. And if, you, if they are a, a downstream upstream provider and someone is consuming their product, it's just like a chain of events. So we just want to provide them some kind of example or like a template um, in the documentation where they could use it to build their own configuration on top of it. I'm not saying that it's going to make everything super secure and just trust it blindly, which no one should and everyone should have security in their mind when they are doing things but it'll actually provide some kind of like base um, secure 
template so they can just build on top of it. And that is one of the areas that we are working on, improving the examples, adding more examples, making sure the security context in those examples are right. Um, in addition to that, we also add um, uh, supplement that content with blog and uh, tutorials, uh, which we don't have that many. Um, that is one thing that we are working on. Um, um, what is that? Uh, what, what else is there? Um, the hardening side. The I'm hardening, pretty yeah, excited yeah, yeah. about. So um, uh, I'm going to come come to that. Thank you, Ian. Uh, so. Uh, and I want to give more of a like glimpse of what we worked on for the past few months and what we are working on right now. Um, so recently, uh, we started working on the hardening guide. Um, and uh, kudos to Rory McCune, who couldn't make it to the KubeCon here, but he's there with us all in spirits, and he's an amazing person. And he has been behind the hardening guide. So we started working on it, and it's, the scope is so big, and we couldn't finish it. But then before that, there was a, um, a blog post made by NSA and CISA uh, regarding the Kubernetes hardening guide. Um, so we did a review of the blog post. Um, and it is available on the Kubernetes website. So if you haven't had the chance to go uh, take a look at it, please do. It's a complimentary content. It's not something uh, like uh, a critic or a review kind. It's more like, like you have to read the original guide and then we have additional things like some of the new features that went inside went into the recent releases have not been covered in the guide, hardening guide. And that is what we have and links to the caps and links to the blog blog post and related stuff. Um, so that's one thing that we published recently. And then the next one that we are working on is a threat model for Kubernetes admin admission control, admission control, I got that right, <laughs> Kubernetes admission control. So that is one thing that we are working on and it's gonna be super useful for end users. So I was that admin, he would just deploy things blindly, everything with default config, which should never ever go into production, ever. So this guide is gonna have all the attack vectors uh, and uh, how to uh, mitigate and uh, more information about that. So that's gonna come out in this month or next month and a couple months, so keep an eye out for that one. Um, so now that I have provided what we are doing, what we have done, I also have, uh, I want to take you all into the dream land of what's there in the upcoming year. Can we, can we move on to the next slide, please? What? Can we move on to the next slide? Um, yeah, of course. Thank you. Um, so um, we, uh, we are working on two, we want to work on two major things. How many of you have had issues with RBAC? Right? Everyone. Uh, everyone, right? I could never find a documentation and I have never gotten it right in the first go at all. I know there are like multiple policy related uh, uh, things coming up. Uh, there are like services. I don't know if everyone is going to use them or not, but still RBAC is important. So that is the next project that we want to have, like have a decent RBAC guide available on the Kubernetes website so that everyone has a baseline to deploy that. The next one is a security checklist, which is closer to my heart. I used to be a platform engineer, and uh, I would have loved to have a checklist when I deployed a cluster, like check, check, check. Oh, I have deployed a cluster, which is secure to an extent by default, right? So that is one of the project. So this is where we need, our, need all your help. So if any of this is interesting, uh, please feel free to stop by, say hi. If you're a new contributor who want to get into security, you are intermediate, you are like a seasoned expert, but you want to give back to give back something to the open source community, and you are looking to start, and this is where you can help us all, um, and you can make the dream come true together. Um, so. <laughs> I, I am pretty dreamy right now, so. <laughs> and uh, so, well, we need your help, uh, so. And we meet once every month on the first Thursday at 2, um, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, and we do most of the things on asynchronously, asynchronously on Slack. So if you cannot make it to the meeting time, that is totally fine. Go to the Slack channel, 
if you have a new idea, post there. And the awesome folks from the uh, SIG security community will be there to jump in, uh, uh, shout out, like, plus one your ideas, add their comments. And um, every, uh, like, if you're looking for motivation, it's there. And if you're looking for collaboration, it's there. And I do have to tell one real thing quick. I missed something. I do realize that I asked for help, and these topics are really, really big. Um, I know about the time commitment, and this is where collaboration comes into play. Um, we in SIG Security love collaboration. We encourage collaborating with others. So you can pair up with other contributors, more contributors, break those things into chunks, ask for help. We are all here to work together and make it happen. Um, that's all from me. Uh, I am hmm. going to um, give it to Ray, who is my awesome friend, I'm gonna talk about uh, audits. All right, thank you. Y'all gotta say next slide when you want me to click a slide, okay? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, so hello, uh, my name is Ray. Uh, I am the sub-project owner of the third-party security audits. Uh, so last third-party security audits occurred in 2019. We released an RFP, uh, which is now closed uh, this year. Uh, we are currently in the process of selecting a vendor. So the, uh, the audit goals, of course, is to find vulnerabilities, fix them, uh, report them to the, to the security response committee as well, uh, get them out and get the fixes out. Um, and see here. And so one of the new additions with the subproject as well is an audit roadmap because the Kubernetes project is such a big and project. Um, I've been on the release team since 118. In 120, we had 42 enhancements. 121, we had 52. 122, we had 53, 54. 56, which 56. Could be a lot. And then 123, we're, uh, we're tracking 57 pending um, code freeze in mid-November. So we're seeing a lot more enhancements go into the project uh, every release. So we need a way to, um, to have external security audits for not just the core components. So in this year's security audits, um, we did include CSI Secret Store, because we do see a lot more end users using CSI Secret Store, meaning that you could keep your secrets outside externally and the pod can mount them as a volume and use it. So, uh, that's also including all the core components of the of the Kubernetes project. Could you go to the next slide, please? Yep. Uh, I, so this is the current audit scope here. So as you see in the very bottom, uh, we have the core components. In the very bottom, we do have CSI secret store. Uh, so uh, next slide as well. Sorry, that's too fast. So um, so what's new with the uh, security audit group as well uh, is this roadmap because we do since this project is continuing to grow, there are components like the like like cluster API um, that we can include in future uh, audits. That and also we want to do more frequent security audits that are more focused um, as well. So part of this as well is that we've started um, doing self assessments, which is more about that later, and we could tie in some of the self assessments into what is going to be included into the third party security audits. It's not required, but doing a self assessment helps. Uh, broad or help strengthen your security posture, so you'll get a better uh, result out of, out of a third-party security audit. So that's it uh, from me. <laughs> so, uh, so stay tuned, and we will do a vendor uh, announcement selection fairly soon, and we should release the uh, the results of the audit uh, fairly soon as well. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ray. So the tooling project, subproject rather, is fairly new and we basically started gaining momentum for it sometime this year. But we have, I think, made quite a bit of progress in the limited time we had. So few things that are done today are two pro jobs, which is our CI CD for Kubernetes, which run every six hours and detect any vulnerabilities that are part of build time dependencies of Kubernetes and uh, images that Kubernetes releases as part of every Kubernetes version. Those are the things we are leading. We are also working on creating a CVE list that's accessible and programmatically accessible by maybe a code command uh, in future. The other piece of tooling is also to help achieve dreams of other SIGs, like SIG architecture, SIG release, 
and also helping sick dogs and third party audit. So some of the things that we have done there is helping on implementing the PSP replacement, the admission control. Then we have helped uh, sick release bump a few images and some build time dependencies. We've been able to remove some code that wasn't needed or was malicious. And we've uh, also been hosting learning sessions in the last two, three months. So we have had Steven join us to talk about how the release image promotion cycle works. We have had uh, Adolfo, who is our track host, join us for talking about S-bombs for Kubernetes. So we continue to do that every third Tuesday of the month. If you have a topic and want to present, reach out to me and we'll probably set up something for you. So this is what we have done so far. And next slide. Next slide is what we are going to do next. So the main thing that's coming uh, soon is the triage policy. So we discussed that we have jobs running and there will be vulnerabilities sooner rather than later. How do you triage that with different SIGs and all of our SIG security friends? So that's an iterative process that we've been working on. The next one after that is trying to start a shadow triage program, uh, learning from what SIG release has been doing with their shadow program, where we'll allow new newcomers and new contributors to join us and triage it, some of the vulnerabilities with us. And as they grow in their role, they become peer triagers. So that's coming up next. And then the whole idea for doing what we do today in terms of managing vulnerabilities is to reduce the gap where the detection time for any new vulnerability that is in Kubernetes code or in the images is, could always be shortened and the remediation time could also be shorted. So that's what tooling eventually intends to do with the job that we are currently working on. And then, the helping never ends, so we'll continue to help uh, Adolfo uh, with uh, and all the release engineering team on all the SBOM work, the Salsa compliance work they're doing. Really excited about how that's going to improve and strengthen Kubernetes as a whole. And then finally, uh, as we discussed, we have 57 enhancement proposals for this release, and if the graph continues to go up and up, we'll probably have more next release. So we need more reviewers to look at that from a security perspective. And that's what we're gonna do. Uh, so hit us up on SIG security tooling if you have questions, but I do want to also talk very quickly about self-assessments and security self-assessments. So a couple of sessions back in this exact room, TAC Security talked about security assessments that they do for CNCF. And this is actually a collaboration between tax security and SIG security. And this is where the name being different actually helps a lot so that you know those are actually different groups, but they are all friends. So what we are gonna do is adopt their practice and their workflow to apply to Kubernetes. And our first project for that, next slide, is Cluster API. So we are going to review uh, and do a self-assessment with Cluster API maintainers and look at it from a security perspective. Once we understand what really is going on, we'll write up a doc, we'll have data flow diagrams, all the good stuff with threat model. And once that is done, we'll ask for reviews. We'll open it up for public comment. We'll share with every one of you and you can pitch in and give us your feedback. The next thing, uh, fortunately, because it seems like it's a good thing that's going on, that other sub-projects in, within Kubernetes are now saying, hey, we want to do a self-assessment too. So now we are trying to create an intake form for everyone where everyone can join and say, we want to do a self-assessment, raise their hand, and then we'll join with them, partner with them, and do something similar that we're doing for Cluster API. At the, uh, and lastly, I'll pass it on back to Ian for wrapping up this session. Um, can I just take a moment to say that um, there are multiple people on this stage who this is their first uh, KubeCon presentation or at least their first recorded presentation or something and that I, it's so awesome that there are a bunch of first time speakers here. That's like super exciting. And thank you. 
Like, I'm so stoked for them. And I think one of the things that we do really well at SIG Security is create this sense of community and this welcoming place for new contributors to get involved and to grow as leaders. Um, you know, because we are all responsible for the security of the Kubernetes project, no matter where you are in your Kubernetes journey. And creating that kind of welcoming environment and a community where people can like feel safe and good to come in when they are learning, and we're all learning really, and like do stuff and help with the project and help secure it, um, has been really, I think, successful. It's gone really well, and it's been really amazing to see these new leaders like grow and shine. Um, so as got mentioned, we're all about collaboration here at SIG Security, and we really like when new contributors get involved, and also we would like new contributors to get involved. So if you are somebody who wants to contribute to the project or the security of the project, um, we are all super friendly. You can find us um, in meetings that are bi-weekly. They are Thursdays at uh, 11 Pacific time. And also we do a lot of business on Slack, so we have a SIG security channel on Slack that you can come talk to us. As I said, we're all super friendly. And if you have ideas or things that you're thinking about or questions that you have or a kept that you want to bring up or a kept that you want to comment on, anything like that, we are a place that is like super open to that and excited about that. Because what this is, is what people bring to it. And the things that we cover and the things that we discuss and the ideas that we have are the ideas that you all come with. So come bring yourselves and your ideas and your lovely shining faces and your smart brains and we would love to talk to you and work with you. Because honestly, security is everyone's responsibility. And if we all work together, when we all work together, we can make the project better. So thank you all for coming to our SIG security update. We really appreciate you and I hope you have a great KubeCon. Thank you. Thank you.